Hey everyone and welcome back. In today's lesson we'll be discussing how to master your portfolio diversification, an essential skill for striking the perfect balance between risk and reward. I'll guide you through our process of designing a well diversified portfolio that combines both traditional assets as well as crypto assets to maximize your returns while minimizing your risk exposure. My name is Tyrell and I'm the CEO of Interstellar Ventures. We help business owners 2x their investment guaranteed. We currently only work with business owners doing six figures or more. So if that's you, get in contact with us. And if that isn't you, don't worry. I also provide completely free advice on how you can go from being dead broke to making at least six figures online. And I give away all the information just like this completely for free. That will be inside of the Side Hustle Club. Now you might ask, Tyrell, why are you giving away all of this information completely for free? when you could drop a 997 course like everybody else. Well, the truth is, is I genuinely do believe that this is a even playing field and I don't believe in give and take. I think that investing is the only industry where you can just share information and you can help each other. It doesn't matter whether I'm talking to somebody that is in my exact same industry, if they're, if they're in venture capital as well, or if I'm talking to somebody that is just a normal investor. Playing the market, you are basically playing yourself. So why not help everybody? And that's why I decided to make a series of programs where you'll be able to learn everything you need to do to make expert decisions inside of this crypto market and hopefully throughout this program i will create some more experienced investors so we will no longer have this moon boy conundrum where everybody feels like they're going to flip this money and become super rich off a hundred dollars and then they end up losing it all and going through that cycle over and over again this should put a stop to that and allow people to make much more educated investments so let's get started why diverse diversify your portfolio. So the main reasons to diversify your portfolio is number one, to allow you to dodge risk exposure. By spreading your investments out across a range of assets, you reduce your overall risk associated with your portfolio. The second thing is it allows you to chase and maximize gains. A diversified portfolio allows you to maximize your opportunities across all markets. Now to get started with diversification, you need to have some solid foundations in place. You should consider multiple things such as spreading your investments across various asset classes including stocks, bonds, real estates and cryptocurrency. Now I've mentioned this previously but this, if this is your first time watching then you need to understand that the fastest route to success is simply to focus on one specific asset class first. I personally recommend crypto and then once you've quote unquote made it diversify your portfolio so then you can capture the gains in different industries but also balance out your risk. You will not in my opinion become successful successful if you spread your money out too thin. I experienced this personally because when I first got started out in the game, I was making about 20 grand a month for my agency and doing some mentoring and e-commerce. And then what I realized was I was spreading out my efforts way too thin. I had stocks, I also had an ISA, I had a savings account and a small crypto portfolio. But that crypto portfolio ended up scaling up to six figures. And what I realized was, hold on a minute, if I had just invested an extra 20 grand, which I wasted in this ISO, which has only made me $50, while this other thing has made me a few hundred thousand dollars, then I would have made double, if not triple the profits, meaning I would have made 600K instead of 200K at the time. And then after making that profit, you can diversify and buy properties. You can go ahead and buy land. You can pretty much do whatever you want once you have enough capital to do so. Quite often, I believe that inside of this you know, making money online space, we get caught up too much in trying to diversify like a traditional investor, not knowing that most of the traditional and the highly successful investors made it all of taking huge risk and now they balance their portfolios. A lot of art dealers have this mindset where they just go out and buy everything. They literally just buy, 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 buy. And then their goal is to have one Mona Lisa. That's similar with crypto. You can go and buy all of these coins and your goal is to get that one you no know, top 10 token that ends up becoming a Dogecoin, for example, or a Shiba Inu. Now I'm going to give you some crypto assets and some investment avenues. So some of the main assets we like to look at is Bitcoin, Ethereum and other crypto powerhouses that have a proven track record of success and they play a significant role in any portfolio. Some of these coins with high potential are tokens like Cardano and Polkadot. These offer very very high returns but they do come with a small amount of risk. Currently we also deployed into a new project called Myria token. This token is brand new 
and it's very similar to Gala Games. I personally deployed $100,000 and as a company, we deployed just under $1 million into this project. The reason is because I'm very bullish into the gaming space and I believe that any company that can develop games similar to Gala Games and build an actual ecosystem around that is a very, very good project. If you go back to the due diligence sector, you will remember that part of our due diligence is to have projects that have a use case for their token within their token economy. If that is the case, that is a good project. And Miria has an amazing token economy if they pull it off, which is always the risk that we face. We also have a plethora of different tokens that we invest into at different times in the market. And if you would like to know that and be the first person to know what we invest into, join our Telegram group, Interstellar Ventures. We will be able to stay up to date with our weekly newsletter. And you will also stay up to date with all of the new and old tokens that we are buying. We just released our 2023 list of tokens so if you're interested in that make sure you check out the group now part of your diversified portfolio should be stable coins and fear anchored tokens stable coins like Teva provide a safe haven during market turbulence and can not only be used for trading but also yield farming. A lot of times, if you take profit, you should first of all secure that. And what we like to do is always have 20% of our portfolio in stable coins at all times. Sometimes we might diversify that into some yield farming plays, but it would always be stable coin plays. And if you've guys seen, now I'm not gonna say the name of, of some of the tokens that have had issues with, with yield farming, but basically in the bear market, every single project that did you know, more than 20% APY messed up big time, uh, because they were taking loans from each other and it always messed up or they got hacked or whatever. So even if you are farming stable coins, that also carries risk. So this means that you should be diversified in terms of cash, in terms of investments, in terms of yield farming cash as well. So your stable coin portfolio should be well diversified in different stable coins as well as in different yield farming methods. Some people, if they see that there are three to four different companies doing 20% APY, will spread a hundred grand across those companies. So if there's five, they give 20 grand to each person and then they'll sit back and relax. Even though they're getting the same returns from each one, they're diversified because at any time with the risks of crypto, these projects would just disappear. And actually touching onto this you know, DeFi scene that we've got, there is a lot of good DeFi projects and DeFi tokens that you could potentially take a look at. Projects like Uniswap, Aave and Compound offer unique investment opportunities through their native token, which can generate yield through staking or liquidity mine. You also have opportunity for NFTs and digital collectibles with inside this DeFi landscape. You can also invest in NFTs and digital collectibles like art, virtual land or in-game items, which all offer unique investment opportunities for the growing digital economy. So here is a game plan for how you can diversify your portfolio. You need to remember to have asset allocation and a rebalancing of your portfolio. We like to craft a perfect mix based on risk appetite and goals. We like to allocate a percentage of our portfolio across each and every asset class. So we'll have a portion of NFTs, which some will hold for a short period of time, some will have a long-term vision, and we will try and sell 90% of our portfolio within the bull run as well. So I'm only going to hold like 10% of these NFTs, uh, even though they'll give all the spiel of why they're bear market proof and XYZ. I'm happy to take my profit on them and take the risk of losing out on future gains. Because realistically, you never lose if you take profit. Now, we'll take profit of 90% of these uh, within the bull market. We'll also have a diversified portfolio of nodes. These will be things like even down to like strong nodes, vapor nodes, Miria nodes. There's even like the Saga nodes coming out now. We'll be well diversified between them, along with uh, large cap tokens like Polkadot, Cardano, Ethereum, Bitcoin. We also have stable coins that we farm regularly. Is regularly. <laughs> no, I apologize for my grammar. I'm not the best, like gr grammatically. And but regularly, we will uh, diversify our stable coins into yield farming plays. Even though there has been tons of scams and stuff like that recently, we're going back into a bull market now anyway. 
know, God willing, we are. And that will play out just fine. And then not only will we have this large, you know, diversified portfolio of large cap coins and NFTs and stable coin plays, but we'll also have meme coins. Remember, our diversified portfolio of investing into ICOs, IEOs, IDOs, and we'll also have a diversified portfolio of low cap altcoins too. And you will have to review these portfolios in terms of the market periods and rebalance them accordingly. Right now, if you look at the market, what is the most undervalued asset class out there right now? I'll let you think. And we're watching this, uh, it is April the 21st, right? Friday, uh, recording this video. So if you're close to April, what do you think? NFTs, these are the most oversold projects on the market right now, right? I'm not talking about buying these these NFTs that have been and gone. Teams already left. They're already building five more NFT projects. They're probably building AI projects right now. Not those projects i'm talking about your crypto punks right i'm talking about the big nft projects out there what you can acquire for half if not 80 percent off their usual price you've got an amazing opportunity right now if you have the liquidity to buy some big blue chip nft projects and to hold on for them because you know you're going to make profit in the future it's a no-brainer from my personal point of view not financial advice if you can purchase assets months if not even a year or two ahead of the liquidity coming into the market, then you, my friend, are a seasoned investor and you are rebalancing your portfolio correctly. We do not aim to rebalance our portfolios when stuff is already going, right? If it's already looking like the market is topping in that area, so if AI has gone too far, right, we're not going to deploy into that, right? Unless we're thinking, right, okay, we'll deploy into it. If it crashes for now, we'll continue to buy and it depends on your strategy. But normally we won't deploy into to uh, something unless we are getting it at a huge discount way 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 before the liquidity comes in and that is how you rebalance your portfolio smartly right we know we're coming into DeFi season. There's going to be tons of different DeFi players. So DeFi tokens are the one. Then we're going to you know, layer ones, for example. When layer ones get busy, nobody wants to pay Ethereum gas fees. So what's popping after that? Layer two scaling solution, right? Then what's after that? Usually some type of gaming or some other thing in the space comes, whatever trend. Probably AI will come back around in that time. Then what's after that? Well, you're talking about meme coins, right? Dogecoin during this period of time is probably going to go on a little rally. There'll be a few memes that come, but nothing really gets popping. And then towards the end of the market, everybody's investing into uh, meme coins and stuff like that. If all of those meme coins end up being on the Binance network, then what's the best investment? BNB. All these guys playing this game are going to have to play it with BNB. So they're going to have to buy that token. And you can just put in 200 to 500 grand into BNB itself or into that pancake swap, for example. And then you are eating off of these people that are just trying to gamble and make a quick buck. So you're becoming a smarter, more intelligent investor, right? If that was too much for you, make sure you rewind it and watch it back. Now, now, touching on that point, I want to help you analyze industry trends and help you to keep an eye on that. So if you're interested in analyzing industry trends or you want to keep up to date while they're currently happening, then please make sure to check out our weekly newsletter, which you can sign up for in the description. And you can also join us inside of our Telegram group to stay up to date. Now, if you are somebody that has quote unquote already made it, then it would be ideal to allocate a percentage of your overall portfolio to cryptocurrencies and then balance them out with stocks, bonds, and also other big players in them. One interesting thing that I don't think many people talk about is people are always going to need energy and they're always going to need food, right? So one thing that is massive right now is commodities. You should definitely explore having a diversified portfolio of commodities because what happens, people need to buy more. Even things like oil and gold, right? These are things that people will forever need. So if you make a lick in the crypto space and you're thinking, well, I don't need to buy anything right now. Watches are over price houses are overpriced where can i put my money where i know it's going to last for a long time and consider diversifying into oil or consider diversifying into some sort of commodities right if you look at the, the chart of food ridiculous right now i'm hearing in the uk it's almost one pound for one egg which is ridiculous right? i've got chickens in this front garden i was thinking right how can i get these chickens to lay more eggs and they'll be free range and i can ship them over to the uk because one pound of egg that is ridiculous i'll just have a whole chicken farm. <laughs> right these are the crazy ideas i've got off its own right but that will allow you to have a well-rounded a well-balanced portfolio right every time you hit a lick diversify remember to have your portfolio in terms of percentages 20 percent for cash etc you'll be able to balance it out and eventually 
you'll be able to decode the ties between crypto assets and traditional assets, which may help you hand in hand when it comes to being able to survive you know, five or 10 years of a profitable portfolio. And the next key thing I want to discuss is we like to survey the market conditions and we want to look for external factors like global economic trends or regulatory changes, which can provide a valuable insight into potential investment opportunities. One key thing that I feel like a lot of people are overlooking right now is the rise of global stable coins right people are starting to create things called bitcoin or something like that there's one called like bitcoin and like usa is looking to create a stable coin now as well so what you're going to start to see is a rise of stable coins and then you're going to start to see these countries do airdrops to their people giving people quote unquote free money for joining onto their stable coin which obviously they can just produce themselves which when you think about it is some serious matrix stuff however it is also something that you can take advantage of now we can't control what people are going to do we already know that people will accept these airdrops if a country says to i'm going to airdrop every single one of the people that vote for me a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars right they can even say a thousand dollars a month people are going to take it which means these stable coins are going to be able to to be transferred into the crypto market so now you have to start thinking you know if you can keep an eye on the global economy and you can see these opportunities when they're about to happen then and there will be some incredible investments that you could make. Now, finally, we like to analyze our portfolio on a month by month basis. We consistently monitor our performance of each and every single asset within the whole portfolio. We try to spot laggers and if we invest into a token and it doesn't move for the first three months, we're okay with it. But we set a cap on that fourth month to consider moving it around for other assets that might offer a higher return. I'll give you an example, right? If you buy a crypto punk and the crypto punk doesn't move for six months but you know that your whole strategy was to wait for a year then i would consider six months not to be a good time to quantify when to sell that investment now after a year if it still doesn't move then you might want to consider moving up towards maybe a board eight for example right and the list goes on if it was a asset for example if you invest into polka dot polka dot doesn't move for six months right or well for polka dot would be a little bit different It'd probably be three to six months and it looks at three months and you're like okay um, been three months polka dot still not move where should i put it or should i buy more or am i you know what i mean whatever then your strategy was six months so you should wait till that six months to reevaluate if it hits the six months and you still haven't seen a huge impact in terms of your portfolio then what you can do is you can look at your portfolio as a whole especially if you're you know, a well diversified investor and you've got decent exposure to the market you'll have a portfolio where you can see the movers in there i mean it's just like business right it's just like content if you're doing content and you're seeing that some of your videos are getting 10k views and the other part of your videos only getting you know, a thousand views then what do you do you double down on the 10k views right you can look at your portfolio and you can say okay this industry or this sector that i'm investing into you know, has shown consistent and regular growth over the periods of time where this one's being a slow mover so you can move it to here right then that sector gets more growth and then when the time's right and you start to see you know the polka dot ecosystem come back then you can pull that money back into the polka dot ecosystem it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to remove the project from your whole portfolio but you can rebalance it according to the demand in the market now the next thing is risk management and this is very very interesting you can deploy stop loss orders to stop you from losing money in the asset if it goes lower than a certain level now there is a huge debate at the moment on whether some people should be using stop losses and some people shouldn't be and people have their own strategies for just like never using stop losses as their own. Uh, some people say the traders, people can see your stop losses. And I think that's true as well. I don't know if it's like, out there and the information's out there, but it makes sense that market makers will be able to see people's stop losses and they will want to wick you out of your position so they can get trading fees. Now, if you are trading spot, then I have to be careful with wording here. When we trade spot, we don't use stop losses, right? Because we're buying the spot asset. That's like having a stop loss on a house right if you buy a house and the housing market collapses well do you want to get stopped out of that house and that house you know, and it gets recalled or something you don't want to do that right if the housing market is collapsing and you already have properties you may as well double down and buy more properties so that's the same way we treat our spot assets now if you do have leverage positions and you're trying to leverage trade which to be honest we don't really recommend we offer some sort of sometimes we we show like trading setups that we do leverage but if you're a business owner there's no point doing trading right 
right? There's no point trading if you're a business owner. Focus on your own business and do your business and just buy a spot. Now, if you do have trading positions, then you should be using stop loss. But spot buys, you shouldn't be using a stop loss. The only time that you could, you should consider using some sort of stop loss, which isn't actually on the platform, but it's in your brain or you set that mark, is when we are approaching the end of a bull cycle. If you're siphoning profits, you're taking profit here, you know, you're buying this business here, you're buying this property here, you know, you're following the interstellar ventures strategy and you're diversifying this portfolio into commodities and stock what you're getting from profits from these spot buys, then if it hits a certain point, you know, just like us, you want to get rid of 90% of that portfolio. So you will have a point where it's like, okay, you know, we've been bullish for so long, Bitcoin's at, you know, 80k for example. You know, if it goes past 65, then we'll cut the losses there and we'll keep it moving. That is considered as a smooth approach. You know, we would consider that as, as a very, very smooth approach. And it allows you to be discipline driven when invested. And it removes these emotional choices that most people make, right? You want to make investment decisions based on sound research and analysis rather than emotions such as fear and greed. This will lead to poor choices. There's a quote, I think it's from Confucius or it's a stoic quote. And it goes, nothing good has ever happened by making a decision based on emotion. Nothing, right? Think of the last emotional decision that you made and that fast reaction that you made. When has that ever been a good decision? Now, in this discussion, we've explored the importance of having a well diversified portfolio and how it can help you achieve your ideal goals by balancing the difference between risk and reward and incorporating various different asset classes into your investments. And these strategies can help you reduce your risk exposure while gaining huge advantage and opportunities from the markets. Now remember, it's important to always review your portfolio at least once a month to maintain a desired balance and not to get lost in all of the drama that's happening on the market. If you invest into a project and you really believe in it and you have a six month vision and just because it isn't doing well in the first two months, don't worry about trying to flip that into a different asset class that you see moving. Now, if you do have a well diversified portfolio, that's when you start to look at things a little bit differently and you go, okay, you know, as we're approaching, you still wait for six months. Now, but once you hear that six months, then you can start to move it over into other tokens or other industries that might be higher performing. There was a great opportunity for this during the recession. We started to see oil and commodity go through the roof. So if you was well diversified last market, okay, last bull market, you'd already be in these assets and then you'll be able to make the choice to go, okay, you know, crypto is not really popping right now. What I see, even though we're in a bear market during crypto phase, right, there is a whole bull market going on in the oil and commodities industry. And you would have been able to notice that in your portfolio and move accordingly. So all in all, guys, thank you for taking this time and taking time out of your day to educate and learn more about a diversified investment portfolio. I'll see you guys in the next episode and peace.